Born Betty Jane Greer on September 9, 1924, Jane Greer was an American film and TV actress who was perhaps best known for playing the femme fatale Kathy Moffat in the 1947 noir film Out of the Past. While it once seemed as if Greer's career was on an unstoppable trajectory upwards, she essentially faded away into relative obscurity. Join Facts Verse as we tell the incredibly tragic story of how one man caused Jane Greer's career to crash and burn. Greer had a difficult childhood. Jane Greer was born in Washington, D.C. She was the daughter of Betty and Charles Durrell McClellan Greer, Jr. At age 15, Greer suffered from facial palsy, which left the side of her face paralyzed. While she managed to recover, the condition likely is what left her with her signature look, a calm and impenetrable gaze that would lead RKO Productions to promote her as the star with the Mona Lisa smile. Greer claimed the facial expressions she had to do to overcome her paralysis were what taught her the value of facial expressions when conveying human emotion. She started her career in show business as a big band singer. She also competed in beauty contests and did some professional modeling as a teen. In 1945, she legally changed her name from Betty Jane to Jane. Of her previous name, she said it was too Bo Peepish and ingenuish for the types of roles she wanted to play. Howard Hughes both made and destroyed her career. Howard Hughes was an inventor, director, business magnate, pilot, and a dozen other things rolled up into one eccentric individual. While he was a man who undoubtedly was a force to be reckoned with, he was also known for being quite the sleazeball. Countless tales paint the picture of Hughes as being a huge creep who coerced young women into signing unethical, money-grabbing contracts to control their lives and careers. And no one knew that side of Hughes more than Jane Greer. If she'd never met Hughes, Greer quite possibly could have been the biggest film noir starlet of her time. The stupidly rich tycoon and filmmaker had spotted a teenaged Greer in the pages of a magazine and felt compelled to lasso her under a personal contract. When Greer signed her contract, Hughes informed her he never wanted her to get married. Shockingly, he didn't want her to act either. She was forbidden from doing even a simple screen test. Greer wasn't going to just sit back and take that kind of treatment, as she quickly snapped back at Hughes with a string of obscenities. The first thing she did to get back at Hughes for thinking he could run her life was by marrying crooner Rudy Valley. She then sued Howard for a breach of their contract. To avoid controversy and having his name ran through the mud, the super jealous and spiteful multi-millionaire was left with no choice than to let Greer buy out her contract for the sum of $7,500. And that certainly was a lot of money for someone in the 1940s who had been unemployed for a better part of her adult life. Not being able to cover the bill in one payment, Hughes allowed Greer to pay him back in weekly installments of $25. That way, he was still able to financially control her. It took Greer six years to pay back Hughes in full. But even that amount of control wasn't enough for Howard. Greer was able to find relatively quickly a new studio to act for over at RKO, and her movie career was finally starting to look back on the right track. That is, until she found out the studio had been sold to none other than Howard Hughes. Not long after he bought the studio, Hughes called Greer into his office and informed her he would no longer be using her anymore, and that since she was under an exclusive contract with RKO, it meant she wouldn't be able to work for anyone else. Greer protested and told Hughes he was essentially ruining her film career, and reportedly Hughes replied by saying, yes, that's right. He knew precisely what he was doing, and it looked fairly clear he was acting out of sheer spite. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like, and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already, and stick around for more about Jane Greer. Hughes found additional ways to tank Greer's career. Even though Hughes wanted to ruin her, Greer did go on to have her big breakthrough role. When another actress dropped out of appearing in The Big Steel, Hughes was forced to find a replacement at the last moment, and it had to be a name capable of selling tickets. The only actress whose schedule was sufficiently clear enough to squeeze in the last-minute part was Jane Greer. There was only one problem. Greer was hiding the fact she was pregnant at the time. Sadly, this was something many women in Tinseltown did back in that era. Hughes flat-out refused to pay for a new wardrobe, so Greer had to come up with novel ways of hiding her pregnancy while wearing skimpy crop tops designed for someone thin as a twig. Somehow, she managed to successfully even hide her pregnancy from her co-stars. Reportedly, she even managed to convince them that the pills she was taking for her pregnancy were meant to combat the ill effects of drinking Mexican water. Despite having to jump through all these hoops to keep her job, Greer still managed to deliver one of the finest performances of her career. 
even though Greer was immensely talented and given a few notable noir roles in films such as Out of the Past, Hughes's bitter preoccupation with stifling her career did in fact cost Greer some of the best and most profitable years of her life. After spending six years with RKO, barely receiving any work to speak of, she did manage to finally pay off that first contract she made with Hughes. Perhaps as some kind of final display of bravado, Greer even requested Hughes to let her slide on the last $50 of that debt. Not surprisingly, he refused. Jean Greer's Career Post Out of the Past in 1951, Greer appeared in You're in the Navy Now. A year later, she had a starring role in the film The Prisoner of Zenda. The last two significant parts of the early era of her career were in Run for the Sun and Man of a Thousand Faces. In 1984, after a long break from doing movies, Greer was cast in a remake of Out of the Past called Against All Odds. In that film, she played the mother of the character she'd played in 1947. Greer had several notable television credits throughout her career. Some of the most noteworthy shows she appeared on were Alfred Hitchcock Presents, Murder, She Wrote, and Bonanza. In 1987, she got to poke fun of Out of the Past in a parody alongside Robert Mitchum in an SNL sketch. In 1984, Greer joined the cast of the CBS primetime soap opera Falcon Crest, and in 1990, she was given a recurring role on Twin Peaks. Her final film role was in 1996's Perfect Mate. At age 76, Greer died of cancer on August 24, 2001 in Bel Air, Los Angeles. Howard Hughes died on April 5, 1976, at age 70, while on board a Learjet owned by Robert Graff. He was en route from Acapulco to Methodist Hospital in Houston. Hughes was unrecognizable when he died. His drug use and reclusiveness had taken quite a toll on his body. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you remember Jane Greer best for The Big Steel or Out of the Past? And did you know about Howard Hughes constantly tormenting her? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give the video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.